If you read the word of God every day, every day you're going to get something different from his word. Why? Because he's full of wonder and he never runs out. Amen. Amen? He never runs out. So, so what can we do to start getting our life full of wonder? We need to start doing that. We need to start, you know, connecting with the source of wonder, which is the Lord. We need to start connecting with it. We need to start seeing this word as something that is alive and it can give me spiritual food and it can satisfy my soul. You see, we don't have to talk, we don't have to talk to people about, oh, why don't you serve God, or why don't you do this, or, 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 or encourage people, oh, why don't you um, go to church, or encourage people, oh, why don't you do this, or why don't you do this for the Lord, things that we see in the Word. No, we don't have to encourage those things if, if we simply are reading the Word every day. If we read the word every day, if we pray every day, we're just connecting with God. You're going to see it's not about prayer. It's not about a chore. It's not like, okay, I need to get down and, and do this, put the timer on. No, prayer is not about that. We, we call it prayer, but this is conversation with God. Amen? You're waking up every day to converse with the Creator. You're waking up every day to talk to the Lord of glory. Amen. You're waking up every day to f get full of his wonder. To get connected with his wonder. Hallelujah. That's why we do it. We read the word to get connected to his wonder. So that our souls can be satisfied. So that our souls can be full. And let me tell you, your life will change dramatically. You will not struggle with doing things for the Lord. You will not struggle with, to talk about somebody to somebody about God. You will not struggle to, to do the right thing or to, or to have a pattern in your life. You see, at a certain point, we have to develop a pattern in our lives. And this is a pattern of wonder. It's a pattern where we are connected with God. And we are doing this just like the sun rises every day. We want the Son of God to rise in us every day. We want His Spirit to rise, to rise up in us every day. We want His Word, the bread of His Word, to give us food every single day. Hallelujah. And when we, when we start doing that, our lives are going to change. We're going to create patterns. We're not going to be... We're not going to be worried about, oh, um, you know, why do I, I have these things happening, I have this thing happening Sunday, I have this thing happening this other day, so, so maybe, no, we're not going to be questioning our meetings with God. We're not going to be uh, making room for something else. Why? Because you're going you're gonna to think, but why would I make some room for something else to take away my wonder? Why would I make room for something that is going to avoid me of my fulfillment? That's going to avoid me of, of the delight of my soul. That's what happens when you start feeding your soul the right things. Your soul will begin to crave the right things. Our souls and our, and our bodies will always crave whatever is being fed the most. Amen? Amen. Whatever is given the most. You can develop an appetite for something that you didn't like before. And that's the thing that we have to understand. Our souls have been voided of God. They don't know what it tastes to be with God. Our souls, because of sin, they were obstructed. They were killed by sin. They were held hostage by sin. Therefore, our souls did not know what is to delight in God. And that's why the psalmist tells us also, taste and see that the Lord is good. When we taste and we see that he is good, our soul will want to say, I want a little bit more. Amen. I would like some more tomorrow. When you taste something good, that is good, that is healthy, that gives you joy and delight, and has no bad effects on your life, you will want to do it every single day of your life. So every single day of our lives, we can taste and see that the Lord is good. 
Amen. Every single day of our lives we can taste the Lord. And that's why even Jesus tells us. He says, if any man thirst, come and I'm going to give you water. I'll give you water, living water. It says, if any man thirst, come unto me. Amen. If you are thirsty, there is a fountain of water that is flowing. And it doesn't flow just Sundays or Thursdays. It flows every single day. It flows. And when it flows every single day, you can come on Thursdays and Sundays for the overflow. Amen. When it flows every day, you're going to say, wow, I need, my soul needs a little more. My soul just desires a little more. Why? Because I'm tasting something that is powerful. I'm, saying, I'm tasting something that is so incredible. Why wouldn't I want more of that? And there comes a point where the soul starts to ask for it. But then we're in a problem. We're in a complication. And the problem is that our lives are not governed by the desire of our heart and our soul to run after the Lord. But our, uh, our lives are governed by the schedule of the world. What do I mean? We allow the world, we allow everybody else to make our schedule. We allow everybody to make our schedule. But the last person we allow to make our schedule is God. Amen. It's the last person we give full authority to make our schedule. Amen. And that's what we have to understand. I don't need the world. You know what? The world is going, is going to empty me out. Work is important. We have to do it. We do it every day. Things, uh, affairs of this world, they're important. We do them every day. But you have to realize that those things will empty you. They will drain you. Society drains. Civilization drains. But there comes a point where we have to learn that every day I need to be full of something. Every day I need to fill myself, my soul, and my heart with something so that I can survive. Amen? So that I can survive in this world. So that I can survive in the things, walking through this earth and still holding on to the hand of God with strength. How? Because every day I need to fill myself with wonder. And if I fill myself with wonder, everything else is going to be okay. My relationships on earth will be okay. My work will be fine. Amen. Because you see, God is the one that gives and takes away. God promotes. God gives jobs. God gives economy. God gives all kinds of gifts. And you don't think he's going to bless us? He will bless us. He will bless the soul that desires to seek him. Amen. He will bless that. So what are we to do? We are to do just like the psalmist will tell us. We ought to do just how the psalm says. Look what it says. Psalms, verse, verse, psalms 34 and verse number 1. Psalms 34 verse number 1. I will bless the Lord at all times. Amen. We're not even talking. He's not talking about daily. He's not saying I will bless the Lord every day. Obviously, David was a little bit out there. He's saying, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. Amen. If David was alive today, he will be seen as a fanatic. Yeah. He'll be seen as the biggest religious crazy nut that there can be. But you know how God called them? He said, this is the man after my own heart. This is the man after my own heart. Is there anything wrong about, about that? Is there anything wrong about being after God's own heart? 
Is there any reproach in that? Is there any reproach in wanting to shout his praise out loud? Is there any reproach in wanting to do it not just in church but in the street, in the supermarket and somewhere? Is there any reproach in wanting to have his praise continually in my mouth? It says, verse number 2, My soul makes its boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear of it and be glad. It says the humble is the ones that want to listen about God. And then look what he says. He's, he's, he hasn't gotten enough. In verse number 3, he says, Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. You know what David is saying? David is saying, it's not enough what I do by myself. I will play, praise the Lord at all times. Every day I'm praising God and I'm having my time with God because I need my life to be full of his wonder. But then he says, that's not enough. Besides that, I need you to do it with me together. That's why we come to church. Because we're coming now to do it together. Let us exalt his name together. Oh, hallelujah. Let us exalt his name together. And this is exactly what God desires of his children. You see, when we are praising God, when we're worshiping God, we're getting full of his wonder. We're living lives where, where they're going to be full of, of the creation of God. Full of the wonder and the joy and the power of God. And that's why we see the importance of that time. That time alone with God. That time of personal relationship with God. Where we are going to delight ourselves. You see, we need, to, we need to start getting that into our souls. Where, where we understand that God is the delight of my soul. He's the fulfillment of my soul. He's what makes me live. He's what makes me breathe. He's what gives me everything in my life. Is that the light on my soul? Yes. And if we could just get together with Him, yes. get together with Him. You know what? Prayer doesn't have to be the same thing every day. It doesn't have to be the same way every day. It doesn't have to be always this time, this um, a space of time. It doesn't have to be every every day the same space of time. It doesn't have to be the same way. It doesn't have to be in the same words. No. Prayer is a conversation. Amen? Yes. But we need to see it as a moment with God. That's what prayer is. It's a moment with God. Yes. And every day we got to say, you know what? I need a moment with the Lord. Yes. I need a moment with His holiness. I need a moment with His Spirit. Hallelujah. I need a moment with Him. So that I can restore my soul. So that I can have something new in my soul every day. You see, when you come to a moment with God, when you come to a moment of relationship with God, when you come to one of those moments, your soul is recharged. Your spirit is uplifted. God gives you wonder. Yes. To some people, He gives visions. And some people, He talks to them. Some people, He, he just overshadows them with His presence and gives them comfort. Whatever it is that happens in prayer, what's happening is that God is restoring your soul, is recharging your soul, uplifting your spirit, giving you joy for the day, hope for today. Amen. Love to endure. Amen. Hallelujah. Yes, my is giving a light for your path every day. And we have to realize that every day, every day, we need that. Every day, every day, we need God. Yes. Oh, hallelujah. That's why Jesus says when he's talking to 
to his disciples about prayer. He says, he didn't say repeat after me. He says, let me give you some principles of prayer. Let me give you the idea behind prayer. It says, our Father which art in heaven, hallowed, hallowed be thy name. It says, your kingdom come. Your what? Will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And it says, give us what? Daily bread. Daily. You see the word daily? Jesus said it. I think Jesus knows a lot or maybe a whole lot about our soul. I think he has an idea of what the soul needs. He's the greatest physician. The greatest counselor. Wonderful counselor. Mighty God. The everlasting Father and the Prince of Peace. That's Jesus. He is the wonderful counselor. So he knows a little bit about how our soul is built and what our soul needs. And in, in it, in his format or principles of prayer, he is speaking and ministering to his disciples about daily bread. What he's saying, you need daily food. Not weekly. Not bi-weekly. You need a daily food in your soul. So... Many people don't like fasting, right? I don't like fasting. I hate fasting. <laughs> yeah, I mean, anybody that says I love fasting is crazy. But, I do it. Because I know it's good for the soul. Amen. Regardless, we don't like fasting because we want our food, we want our bread, the coffee, whatever it is, tea, oranges, whatever you like in the mornings. But even though we don't like fasting for our natural bodies, it seems that we go on long fasts of our daily bread. It seems that we have no trouble fasting for the Spirit. What, what am I saying? Abstaining from the bread of Christ. We go for numerous days abstaining from it. We go for numerous days abstaining from a, a, a little bit of water. See, prayer is drinking water in the Spirit. Connecting with His living Word is daily bread. And both bread and water are elements of diet. Are very elemental things of diet. And that's what Jesus is saying. I am the very basic of your spiritual diet. I am the very elements that will make you live in this world. What is those elements? The very, very basic elements. The things that are needed mostly than anything is water. We can live without, we can live without food for a little bit. We cannot live without water. And Jesus is saying, I am water. What does that mean? He's saying, I am, I am indispensable in your life. I, you, you need me. You need me. Yes. You need this water. You need the Spirit. You can't live without it. Your life will turn into chaos without it. You'll be dry. And, and I, I'm also your bread. You see, when Satan was tempting the Lord, he says, why don't you turn these pieces of stone, these stones into bread? It says, get behind me Satan. It says, it is written. Men shall not live by bread, physical bread, natural bread alone. But by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Amen. Again, this is the Lord Jesus again. He is telling us, there is a daily communion that you need to have with me. If you want your life to be full of wonder. If you want your life to be full of life. See, His life. He said, my words are true and life. His words are life. His words are true. So what do I do? I just need to allow, connect with Him every day. Commune with Him every day. Let Him be my daily bread. Let Him be my daily water. And you will see your life flourish. 
in a way that is going to be saturated with wonder. Yes. Oh, hallelujah. Yes. And when it's saturated with wonder, it's like walking in the clouds with the Lord. Amen. There could be chaos on earth. There could be wars. There could be all kinds of things, afflictions and pains. But the joy of the Lord will prevail. You'll be walking in the joy of God. You'll be walking in a different place. Oh, hallelujah. Why don't we stand up this morning? Hallelujah. This altar is open as we talk to the Lord this morning. Let, let's talk to Him. Uh, maybe some of us, and I include myself, I don't, I don't commune with Him the way I would like to commune with the Lord. Let's commune with them. Let's commune with the Lord. Say, God, I, I need more communion with you. God, I, I need to allow you to help me make my schedule. Help me make my decisions. Help me make my schedules, God. With your direction, with your strength. Says, God, I need you. I need you. I need your spirit. I need your water. I need your daily bread. I desire.